Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Today's Real Talk is gonna be so exciting. I am literally honored to be interviewing Humberly today. Hi Humberly, I'm gonna bring you right in. Um, okay, amazing. Hi everyone, this is so exciting. Today's live, I literally couldn't sleep. I'm like literally so excited about this. Okay, so I'm gonna bring Humberly in. Um, bring her in. Here we go. If I'm going to do a jumps in. Are you all ready for this? Here we go. Ah! Hi. Can you see me? Wait, I, I can't can see, see you yet. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh there we I go. see it. Okay, cool. We're on. Hi. Hi. Beautiful. Hi. Oh my How goodness. Are you? I'm good. I am so excited to, that you're here today. Um, a little intro for everyone. Big intro, actually. Um, Humberly is recently a feature star on Ginny and Georgia, which hit <laughs> number one on Netflix in all these different countries. Literally <laughs> unbelievable. Congratulations. Thank um, you. <laughs> just an, such an unbelievable like experience overall. I want to hear all about it. First of all, Humberly and I met like oh my god five six years ago. We did we did a comedy video together. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, um, we did. I haven't. We literally haven't caught up, and so I'm so excited to have you on today. How are you? I'm good. Um, you know, it's a uh, kind of a rainy day in Toronto. I actually had to take my dog to the vet. Uh, he's doing okay. He just has a bit of like an ear infection, and so just giving him lots of love. <laughs> Everyone here, they're like, Oreo, what's wrong with him? Oh, he's good. I promise. I, will I love that. Give oh updates. Okay, good. good. <laughs> Take care of your dog. Oh, my God. Um, this... I love your little buns. They're so oh cute. Oh, my God. Thank you. These, is, these are definitely, like, my go-to, especially when my hair is getting, like, towards the end of getting washed. I'm like, it's bun time. Um, <laughs> I love them, my little space buns. Yes. They're so cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> so cute. Um, okay, I want to dive right into this. I know that you filmed Ginny and Georgia in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, how has the entire process been from like, auditioning and filming and it coming up now in 2021? How has it all been? Wow. I know. And the fact that it takes so long from like, actually filming it to seeing it happen. I mean, in two years, I've done so much in between and you almost wow. forget, you know, like you forget that that happened. And then when it's coming out, there's this energy, like right before it premiered, um, all of the actors were doing a countdown every single day. And it just, the closer it got, we were just like, it's almost like you can't sleep. You have this energy. You don't, you hope that people will like it. And you're just so excited to, to even see it yourself. Like I hadn't seen any, anything until wow. I saw it on Netflix too. So for me, it's also, I'm experiencing it with everyone at the same time um, while watching my face on screen. But I'm just so proud of everyone, honestly. Like, I don't think anyone knew it was going to be this big. Wow. Um, to beat out so many Netflix records, like, to beat out Tiger King, like, that was a time. Hold on. <laughs> like, I more than 27 days, but we were... I saw you post that, and I literally told my family, yeah. they're like... That's I know, because that was, I mean, I know that it was a different time. Last year, around this time, it was Tiger King came out, and you know, we were all just at home. And this was something we all experienced globally. So it feels like once again, we've experienced that, but with something better. I'm like, I'm not saying Tiger King's the best show. I'm like, I can't. We watched it because we couldn't look away. But <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's incredible. That's wow. Huge, huge, huge congratulations. Like I thank you. I know how grounded and humble and just genuine you are that I know you're taking it all in like full wholeheartedly mm -hmm. just continue the love and the energy that's so unbelievable I'm so happy for you I literally seen, you. <laughs> like I've seen your growth I mean I haven't really like I don't know the behind the scenes and yeah like mm -hmm. filming to the, having it come out is just like years apart and so you've grown so much as a person as well um how long was the filming um, for the whole series? I think all in all, it took like six months. That's usually wow. how long it takes to shoot, like four to six months. Um, I booked this last summer. So it's been kind of a process of, you know, it's almost been exactly two years since I did that tape. It was 
in July that I did it. And um, I, you know, I recently posted it on my Instagram because I want to kind of start doing that to see the process of like the first time I get the material to what it looks like on screen and kind of demystify the whole process of acting and putting yourself on tape and putting it out there. And, and you know, I get a lot of questions because I know a lot of people are inspired and they're like, oh, like I want to act. I want to maybe like consider this. And it's kind of confusing sometimes to like, how do I do that? And the, you know, the system is all the same. You train, you find an agent, you start auditioning. And then if you book it, you book it. But, you know, to a lot of people, it just seems so unattainable. And I want to kind of break that barrier that I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to be an actor, like you can do it. This mm -hmm. exists all over the world. And, um, you know, I think the secret, the secret really is just you, you have to believe in yourself and know that like, if you're a human, and you can kind of take hold of all of those things that make you you, you bring that into your characters. And that's why when I share my tapes, everyone's like, oh, like you see so clearly that energy and the smile and the charisma and all of those things. I'm like, that's just me. I bring myself to the work. So to show that it kind of shows other people like, okay, I just need to put myself in the middle of all of it. And wow, that's it. Yeah. Good for you. That's incredible. I mean, yeah. What, what like a whole, a whole experience of kind of like, you having full belief and you putting, you know, the energy and the vibes out there and things that are meant for you come into 100%. your world mm -hmm. um, must be really tough for, I mean, I know in the dance world too, like, you know, the uh, and in the acting world, like you just get, you can get a bunch of notes as well. Um, yeah. But I guess it's, it's the continuous belief. Okay. That door closed for that reason kind of thing. For sure. I mean, like I'm so that? sure of it now. When I first started, I used to get extremely nervous especially since auditions were in person more than self tapes. Now everything's kind of remote. You do it at home. You kind of get to do it on your own time. You don't get that same kind of energy and feeling when you're about to like meet the director, meet the casting agent, meet the writer. All of these people are in a room. And I used to get so nervous, like literally that lump in your throat and you're shaking and you're sweating. And I'm like in the bathroom, giving myself a pep talk, like you got this, you prepared. And even still, like sometimes I would lose the lines and I would get all flustered. I remember this one time I choked so hard in an audition that casting agent was like, do you need to take a break? Like, do you want some water? And I just couldn't get it out. And it's just like, I worked myself up so hard because when you want something and you care about something, mm -hmm. you just like, it feels like anxiety, but it really mm -hmm. is just a lot of energy that's displaced and you don't know where to put it. So I've had to really, it's been a long journey of like the last six years being here in Toronto of like learning to harness that energy and understanding mm -hmm. that instead of it looking at it as a negative thing, like those nerves and the anxiety, use that energy and think, okay, like this is a moment where I feel really alive. That's kind of what I think to myself, like I'm alive, I'm feeling like it's so much better than being completely numb. If I'm feeling this, it's because I care and that's a good mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So all I have to rely on is my prep. Like if I prepared and I learned the lines, I have to trust that a I've already been chosen because you've been given an opportunity to audition. You've beat out mm -hmm. hundreds of people who couldn't even get an audition. So mm -hmm. look at the positives instead of like, they're going to hate me. Um, and mm -hmm. then just trust that the work is inside of me instead of like putting so much pressure on myself and with that comes the surrendering, just the letting it go. The mm -hmm. second I audition for something, just let it go. Because like you said, I really believe if something is meant to be yours, it will come back to you. The universe doesn't give you things you're not ready for. I always say that. And it's so yeah. true. And as long as you do your part of things, which is prep, then mm -hmm. everything else mm -hmm. is out of your hands. We can't control anything in this world. This industry is very like all over the place. All I have control over is how I react and how I, you know, my perspective. So yeah, it's been a long journey of that, like going wow. from being like a ball of nervousness because I cared and I wanted it so bad. This has been my dream since I was a little girl. And then to see it actually happening, um, I have to sometimes just breathe, ground myself, remember that it's baby steps, remember that everything will come in its time. You can't mm -hmm. get it all at once and you're not going to be confident and ready to receive it all at once anyway. So that's right. It's just one project at a time, one audition at a time. And then you just let it all go. Forget about it. Don't even obsess about like, oh my God, who got it? Who this, whatever. Like, it's just not meant to be yours. And that's okay. Yeah. You're making room for what will be yours. 
That's right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Wow. That's, that's incredible. So yeah, you all didn't really know how big it was going to be when you were filming it. Um, like, that's how can we <laughs> literally, wow. and like the fact that there were so many firsts in this, right? Like first time creator, Sarah and first time showrunner, Deborah, like they were amazing. They all, this was everyone's like little baby, you know, like the creator took 10 years till now to make this. And wow. that is a whole lifetime. It's worth it because of that and she never gave up she put so much work into this how are you ever going to know that something's a hit except she wrote from what she knows from mm -hmm. the heart and she you know wholeheartedly trusted that this was the story that she was going to make and I'm so happy that it was received the way it was and of course because even as we were reading the scripts I was like wow this is very relevant this is something mm -hmm. that I think young audiences need to hear yeah. these are stories and representations in a way that you don't often get on TV. Like, mm -hmm. I wish I saw the show when I was like, in high school, like it would have been life changing. Literally, literally, that's incredible. So I know of Sarah, I've met Damien before we did an acting thing. Really? And really He's amazing. Too, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, wow, this definitely was in Toronto. Like, I knew a bunch yes. of dancers too. I was like, Oh, this is amazing. So was the yeah. was the producer the writer was that whole um, behind the scenes crew like, are they from Canada? No, uh, you know, Sarah is from LA. That's where she wrote it literally like from her couch. Um, it's Netflix. They pitched it in Netflix in the States, but they obviously like most shows, they come to Canada to shoot because mm -hmm. it's more, I don't know, it's cheaper. Like there's space. Um, the studio that picks you up, like then you have the space here. We shot at Tribro Studios, which is in the East End. Um, Killjoy's shot there as well back in the day but yeah and I love the fact that there are so many Canadians in this it, it shows people that we have so much talent here mm -hmm. and with everything that's going on the fact that Canada and the industry here is thriving mm -hmm. it is opening a lot more doors for Canadian actors to actually be at the forefront of things and not just get like the secondary roles you know like we can now potentially be considered to be leads and series regulars because we get to we're locals and it's a lot safer to travel like to just be local so it's kind of cool that like I live here and this industry is thriving and I feel so grateful to be able to work this entire mm -hmm. past year you know it's like I know not a lot of people get to say that and do that so I'm just happy to be creating content that is meaningful good for you that's incredible well I you're, you've always been doing such incredible things. Um, <laughs> and then this was a big boom. Like your, your Instagram following probably went up, skyrocketed and all these things. I want to talk about kind of like the ups and the downs mm -hmm. mentally as an actress, like uh, getting, oh, you know, yeah. going wholeheartedly <laughs> to roles and then getting no's or, um, you know, yeah. having this excitement in 2019 and then not having it come out in 2021 and you continuously, you know, putting yeah. yourself out there for auditions and things like that. How has it been mentally when you go for it and don't get it or have to wait for these? Like, it's not a nine to five. It's not a typical job. It's so not. Like, yeah. How has all of that been now with the boom on your social media and everything like that, the ups and the downs? How has it, everything been for you? My gosh. Okay. So if I start from, let's kind of like reel it back. Let, let's yeah. try to find a through line here. Otherwise, I'm like <laughs> all over the place. Um, listen, there's always ups and downs in this career. Um, I am a very positive person and I always try to find the silver lining and everything. But something that I've recently learned to do in the past five years is um, to also acknowledge when I'm not at my best. Um, I, you know, discovered that I do struggle with anxiety. And that's something that I think I never even knew what it was. Um, growing up in South America, mental health is so taboo. Like nobody goes to a therapist or gets help for your trauma or anything like that because if you do, you're like considered crazy or something or like there has to be something wrong with you to even get help. Mm -hmm. So for me to ask for help or to even voice what I was feeling, I didn't know how to do that. I just knew how to mask it really, really well. I got very good at throwing on a smile and just kind of diverting the conversation. Um, but what that does, it just kind of builds up these like bad energies and bad feelings and um I felt like there was no space for me to share my downs because I compared my life to other people or like other people who are suffering more than me. And I felt like there was no room for my suffering. Mm -hmm. And 
that's something that I, I really had to grapple with because I felt guilt when I felt sad. You know, like, what do I have to complain about when I have a roof over my head and food and health care and I'm healthy and like there are so many good things in my life. Why would I have to complain when I'm like having a bad day because I didn't book the one project that I really wanted or something, you know, like, but I've, I've come to realize that like everyone's suffering is different and you're still valid even when your life is seemingly better than others, like you can't compare your emotional health to someone else. And that's mm -hmm. something that I've really been trying to be okay with and, and forgive myself for, especially when I never really had an avenue to talk about what my mental health was. I don't think I even said the words mental health until I moved to Toronto. Like I didn't know what it was or that that was even a thing I needed to work on. Wow. And surprise, surprise, like, I went through a lot of traumatic events in my childhood um, and when I was young and back home and moving around was also really tough on us. Like I had to learn to adapt. And I think that's why I'm, you know, very easily I can mask emotions because mm -hmm. that was kind of my life. Um, you know, being ripped from like your family, being ripped from friends, from friend groups. Like I moved halfway through high school. That was like, it was so hard because you have to start over in a new yeah. country um, you know, even the first time I moved to learn a new language, the alienation that I felt mm. was very big. But again, I would just, I would try and I try and I try even through like getting bullied for like not knowing English or getting bullied, wow. you know, like it was just little things wow. that I never picked up on until I was older that I was like, oh, wow, I think this actually really affected me. And the way that it affected me the most was that I just wanted to be agreeable and I wanted to be liked and when you're a people pleaser and that's like your first characteristic, you lose sight of yourself. Um, you don't know how to stand by your opinions and you're very easily taken advantage of, of, you don't know how to say no, you don't know how to set boundaries, all of those things I struggled with. Mm -hmm. So i um, very grateful that I have the words to talk about it now mm -hmm. that I'm able to kind of, you know, I still sometimes get anxious when I'm put in a position where I know I don't want to say yes, but I'm like, there's this other side of me that is like, oh, but maybe, you know, like give my time to everybody and say yes to everything. And there's some goodness in that, but I just had no boundaries. And mm -hmm. because of that, I would just like lose and sacrifice so much of the things that I actually felt and wanted. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, I think a lot of people struggle with, like, of course we want to connect and, and be liked and be personable, but to what extent, um, you know, to what extent are you having like ambivalent friendships that you don't even want to be in toxic relationships, um, you know, because you feel like you owe something to someone when mm. you're not prioritizing yourself. Right. So because of all of those things that I, w I had inside me when I moved here and I started acting, um, it just kind of all came out because this career is so emotional and mm -hmm. I realize that it is so tied to your real life. Like mm -hmm. for me, the parallels are huge. Like acting and real life are just like, they kind of intertwine for me because as I put myself in a, another person's shoes, another character, mm -hmm. um, you know, I am an empath and I feel things so, so deeply that like they open things up in me that I, I have to deal with. I have to wow. deal with the fact that things affect me in a way and I'm, and I don't know where they are coming from and I have to talk about it, mm -hmm. you know? So like, it's been such a healing journey the past five years. I think I've grown the most in my life because wow. of my career. I'm able to mm -hmm. like tackle issues when I didn't have the words before. And I think that's so beautiful. It's like therapy. <laughs> it's like therapy for me wow. being an actor and I get to, be around people who um, acknowledge that and that actually value talking about the bad things. You know, um, I think before it was more like toxic positivity, whereas now I'm like, it's just perspective. Like, I that's where my mind is now. I'm like, things are gonna happen, mm -hmm. and all I can, all I have control over is how I react. So yeah. I'm able to take a breath and a moment instead of emotionally reacting. I get to just okay, so this is how I feel right now. What do I actually feel? Is this a fact or is it a feeling? Mm. You know, like my feelings are going to be replaced by something else eventually. Um, am I just making things up in my head and, and putting myself in an anxious episode and in a fearful place just because 
I don't know the outcome. And if I don't, mm -hmm. then why worry? Like, mm -hmm. that's kind of my train of thought now. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot worry about the things that are out of my control. Whereas before I used to just like freak out, you know, like, oh, what if this like, oh my gosh, I should have said this instead. Mm -hmm. Oh no, like that audition went bad. Like I haven't heard anything. I should probably text my agent. Oh my gosh, I should probably do. And like, I used to obsess over like wow. every little detail. Wow. And it was, I held myself hostage to these things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard, again, when you care, you can't help but like consider every single scenario. But when you do that, you exhaust yourself. Like it is so loud up here. And like, it does get really loud in my head sometimes. So yoga helps, breathing, I meditate, um, and I just try to remember that like this too shall pass, you know, mm -hmm. like those emotions that feel really, really real and intense at the moment. I remind myself that I haven't always felt this, so mm -hmm. it's going to be replaced. Exactly. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I just talked about a lot of things, but no, I love I'm it. just and like sharing very please. candidly. I know. I was like, <laughs> and big question, <laughs> but also... Yeah wow um everything you've been through like I can't I can't even imagine um but everything you've been through it 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 helps in your acting because mm -hmm. you've been through these ups and these downs that you can take those real emotions and create yeah. real emotions for these new characters for sure um, and I love that you you go off your phone off technology on the weekends is it every weekend yeah like I go up to the forest and like I still have it but it's just so nice to connect with earth and that is still something I want to do more of to take breaks because with having such a big platform now like this is so new for me I am only human and I love to connect with fans online they're beautiful people and like I want to tell them all that they're valid and worthy and loved mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time um I could lose hours just sitting on my phone, staring at my screen and doing that. And then I'm like, what have I done? Have I drank water? Have I eaten? Have am wow. I like, I get obsessed with this extension of my arm that it feels like now. And I'm catching myself feeling anxiety sometimes because I feel like I'm letting them down. I feel this guilt if I don't answer to everyone. And I feel like, like I, I owe them again. It's this thing of like, I want to, please them and I want them to like know that I see them mm -hmm. um but I also have to like take breaks and make sure that I'm taking care of myself and know that like there's the online world and then there's the real life which is I'm still out here auditioning every single day working I'm shooting I have to you know I'm home I'm also dealing with the pandemic I'm also dealing with like you know, I don't have any family here except for my brother. My family is away wow. in another country. Like, my parents are away. There's, like, so many things happening. And for me, I realized that, like, going online, it is a bit of escapism. It's so nice here. Like, I get to just have, like, like people who love me and look up to me and they find me inspiring and it makes me feel good. But at the same time, I have to make sure I'm also doing the self-work and that it's not just, like, a superficial thing. Like, am I actually taking care of myself? am I like actually living my truth and like that mm -hmm. inspiration that they see continue digging into that, you know, like continue. If, if I work on myself then in turn, I can be authentic online. Mm -hmm. That's also really, really hard. It's so hard to be like my full me online. There's like, you know, there's this weird superficiality and like fakeness sometimes online that like, it's hard to break through. And I often wonder if I come off that way or not. Like, again, the anxiety of like, what am I being seen as? And all I can do is just try. <laughs> like, I just have to try to, to be my best self on there. Um, but yeah, that's like, definitely a huge insecurity at times of like, how I'm being perceived or saying the wrong mm -hmm. thing and being canceled, like cancel culture is at an all time high right now. And I'm just like, terrified that like, I say something wrong, or I ignore the wrong person. And suddenly I'm being like, Wow, you know, like attacked or something. And it's wow. like a very real thing I never had to deal with because there are so many people looking at me. So at every move, mm. everything is recorded and shared. And, and so it's, it's, it almost feels like I'm being watched at all times. And it's hard to relax. sometimes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This is such an interesting conversation, because mm. it's so true. It's like people, you know, all eyes are on you right now. And mm -hmm. it really is. You are so genuine and so sweet. <laughs> 
And you're like, I just want to respond to everyone. It's literally the most yeah. like humble, down to earth. Like, it's so you're so incredible. And I really do think like from an outsider, but like also insider, I really, I really feel your genuineness coming through on your posts on your social media. No. Like, and, and you do yeah. these lives like it's, it's you giving back as well. And like, yes, all these people watching are just like, seeing you hearing you and it, it is so beautiful like they just <laughs> it's that's so interesting of you know we we the yeah. behind, like the the public we're just like oh my gosh wow 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 look at what she's doing yeah like every process every different person every scenario has anxieties or the, the behind the scenes of for like, sure am i doing this i really am just like a human wow. it's wow. so bizarre to me right like i came from um, Venezuela and I moved here to pursue this dream that like never like this pipe dream quite literally like yeah right it's gonna happen like wow. when does a Latina get to like lead a show and like actually do it this is wow. so new for me because I never saw it when I grew up so for me it was just like this blind faith of like I just really want it and I hope that it happens and I I just you know, every day I wake up and I do something towards that thing that I want. So the fact that it's actually happening and I'm here, yes, it feels surreal. This is so crazy to me. Like, yeah. this is, this is like, <laughs> wake me up from a dream, please. Like, wow. I, I don't take it for granted every single day. I'm so grateful. Wow. I'm so humbled by every single opportunity and new fan. Literally, like I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, there's another 10,000 people that are here and they are like, supporting me and they're like wow. seeing my career and my growth and they're telling me that they're so excited to see my work and that that the characters that I play mean so much to them oh. that it's allowed them to you know be themselves and it's just wow. it's my heart is just so full and I'm so happy that it comes across because that is all I want like I my whole career and this whole dream wouldn't exist without the fandom without the public so that's why I have this need to like connect with them because mm -hmm. I want them to know that I appreciate them and that wow. they're no better than me I am no better than them we're like mm -hmm. equals mm -hmm. and even though I'm on this platform and I have all these followers and all of these things and I'm on screen like that to me is my job and it is a way for me to connect with other people and I also like I'm the same as all of you like it's weird to say that but like it's I don't feel any different um, in that scenario that I'm like, I'm the kind of person that like says hi to strangers on streets or like if I'm on set, I will talk to everybody, background, grip, whoever. I'm a people. So to be able to like connect through my work, that's pretty cool. Mm, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I love, I love you. I love everything that you're about and everything you do you really, you have this platform now and you're putting out positivity. You're putting out, you're, you're showing you're also behind the scenes. Like it's such a mm -hmm. connection. We, people really feel so connected to you and they are cheering you on. And that is so beautiful that you hear these messages, like your, your, your story, your character, like has helped me in my life that I'm yeah. literally getting shivers. That is so beautiful. That's, that's incredible. It's, I honestly, like, I really, really feel like I was put here for this reason. Like I was meant mm -hmm. to do this and I was born to do this, not just for the work. Like, yes, acting literally saved me. Like wow. when I spoke um, on my podcast last time on the girl on girl, like it literally allowed me to be my truest self. Mm -hmm. I found a sense of peace finally to be able to not have to hide from my queerness, mm -hmm. uh, my trauma, my whatever, like all of the things that I probably felt shame for. Mm -hmm. And now I get to just be open about it because of my career it's like I get to live th truthfully through my characters and if other people can do the same because they see me go through it and they see a character go through it or they see themselves mm. represented then mm. you know like we're literally all growing and healing and evolving and like being our best selves through the art and like yeah. you know like that's what it's supposed to do that's what I want it to do it's, it's so beautiful it's like this, it, it's the, like the circle of life almost, right? Like we're all important and we're all like a piece of this machine that's like doing something. So mm -hmm. through our stories, we learn and grow. And like, that mm -hmm. is what I want. It's like such a beautiful thing that that can happen and that we're like existing at this very moment all together, like living this. So it's like, 
Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, what advice do you have for maybe a young actor, actor, mm -hmm. actress, whoever they are, or maybe just a, a person that looks up to you um, yeah. you know, for, for going for their passion and feeling confident in who they are? Yeah. And you know what? Even if you don't feel confidence at the start, because it's hard to kind of believe in yourself when you don't know how it works or your potential or, or how to even get to that place of like auditioning even. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, like, do not listen to people when they tell you that you can't do it or that you don't have what it takes or like maybe you'll just only play these things or only do these things. I got told that what if I had wow. listened to them? Yeah. You know, I got told that I was only going to be like the pretty girl who like, you know, no substance kind of thing. Like, um, or that, you know, I even had someone tell me like, why go to theater school? Like, that's just like a phase. Like you're not really going to make it. Um, wow. And, and I, I was shocked because to me, like you listen to these things and you start doubting it. You're like, well, maybe, I mean, I don't know. Like, Am I just wasting like five years of my life, which is what I did to train for acting. Like training for me was a huge um, telltale to see if I even had any talent or if I could mm. do it or like, what mm. is acting? How do you approach it? I think training is the first step. So if you have a dream and you want to be on TV and you, fi you find this like, oh my God, I want to do that. Like that is what I had since I was a little girl. I just wanted wow. to like be on TV. And I'm like, I don't even know how to get there, but I know I want that. Wow. The first thing you do is like, acknowledge that you want that know that it is possible mm. it's not just like this crazy dream it is 100 percent possible this is why agencies exist and management agencies exist it's why acting schools exist there's acting workshops acting classes it's all virtual now too you can literally sign up online and sign up for like a weekend intensive on zoom like mm -hmm. you literally research acting classes near me and i'm sure you will find something mm -hmm. but the first step is like okay i want to do this so first step train see if you have any like talent in itself honestly you can also like grow into it like mm -hmm. I was not where I am now when I started like for me acting was like putting on a mask and like changing my voice and being like character which exists also but the whole process of me training got me back to me if that makes mm -hmm. any sense it went from like wearing the mask to again taking it off acting is literally just allowing people to see you and like for you to not feel embarrassed or afraid to show who you are. Mm -hmm. So what training does is that it puts you into these exercises that challenge you and, and you come up to, with emotions and you come up to like yourself and be like, okay, how can I get through this? And so training, like, I love it. I love going to school. I literally went to theater school for five years before wow. I even booked my first job, you know, wow. like it's a process. And after that, you, you know, once you get some training, you put yourself on tape, you find your team, like an agent, a manager. And from there on, like, if that person matches, like, your career goals and what you want to do, then you start auditioning. And that is something you learn as you go, you know, like, nobody has it all together when they start know this. Mm -hmm. I came into I came to Toronto, I had never done film in my life, ever, like, never set foot, foot on on set like never did an audition live like I didn't know what I was getting myself into wow but I have my agent who guided me through it mm -hmm. literally one day at a time how how to do self tapes how to like who sees you I don't even know where these auditions come from like who is seeing me <laughs> so like all of those questions will be answered once you have your team but just know that it's like starting from zero and getting to where I am. It's a hundred percent possible because wow. I did it. And I literally am like an immigrant Latina who didn't even grow up in North America, who had an accent, who need, who didn't speak English at one point. Like, wow. If I can do it, I'm pretty sure anybody can. You just have to want it and you have to believe in yourself. Nobody else can validate your journey except for you. Like part of my friends, like fuck the haters. Ah! let them shut up like Real talk. you do you <laughs> do you and all will be well because you will you're the only person that can actually make it happen everyone else will help you on the way there mm. like your agency is there to support you you know people are there to cast you but like if you don't bring yourself to the plate like nobody can force your hand you have to want it and you have to kind of get over that fear and take away all of those like doubts mm. because like 
we're all magic. If you're willing to see, if you're willing to let people see that magic in you, like who doesn't want to see that on screen? Like any human being vulnerable on screen, being authentic on screen. Yes, please. Like make a whole career out of being human. Like that is the literal mm. definition. It's like being a professional human being. Get a hold of yourself, put that on the screen. That's it. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my God. So inspiring. Like your story is incredible. It, when did it's you, been a journey. <laughs> when, did you when did you move here and when did you start acting? Like honestly, training? I moved to Canada in 2007. Wow. And that's when everything changed because literally I was a scuba diver. Um, I had all my certifications and I wanted to study like either marine biology and like literally be a scuba diver and have my own dive shop or wow. like go to China and study communications and like do some like student exchange thing. I just knew that I wanted to like do something. I don't even know with people, with the ocean, like, but when oh. I went to Canada, I'm like in the middle of winter, had never seen snow in my life, had never like owned a, a hat like gloves oh. a scarf like I saw that on tv and I was like why are they so cold like little <laughs> do I know I'm living inside of a freezer um so it was all like adapting for me like living in this way of life living in a place where everybody spoke English like that was new for me wow. so you know I found theater I found theater and I love theater mm. um the playfulness of it the like not taking yourself too seriously, the like pushing your limits and like mm -hmm. finding what makes you, you like theater really like brings out just like so much play um, mm -hmm. in a person. And I think that's where the heart of film is. So like take some theater classes. They're so, they're so much fun. Just drama classes in general, like love. drama games. It just gets you out of your head and into your body. And like, mm -hmm. I love that. But Honestly, like since I moved to Canada, that's when things got really real. Like I, wow. I went into drama in high school. Like mm -hmm. that was my first course that I was like, I know I want to take this. And I, I was in every single play. I did all of the like talent shows, everything. I, I was always performing. So when I graduated high school, I had a choice. I was like, okay, so I could either actually pursue this or not. Mm. And I decided on yes. And the rest is history. I love Five that. years I love of school that. and then... I moved here, found an agent. Wow. And then I started auditioning mm. without even knowing. And like, listen, when I started auditioning, like I still had a job. Like we met and I was doing like music videos. I was a go-go dancer. I was a host at a restaurant. I was a brand ambassador for like a bunch of stuff. I was taking any job I could so that I could pay my rent and like live in this really expensive city. But it's <laughs> because I wanted to be here because this is like where the jobs were. Like this is where it is. So like, I was doing the whole like working actor thing with like 17 Joe jobs until I got fired from my restaurant job. And I took that as a sign to focus a hundred percent on acting and wow. I had to deal with my parents. And I feel so lucky to have them because they supported me through the first few months of me, like not having a job. I was like, mm. let's make a deal. Like if you help me with rent uh, for like these four months and I'm going to focus on acting a hundred percent, see what happens, see how I feel. And if, if I don't make it like, fine, I'll get another job, but let me try and like focus all my energy on this one thing that I love. And they did, they supported me through it. And like, mm. I swear to God, like that's when everything started changing because I was no longer distracted and anxious about learning wow. lines on the job or like, all I had to do was like every audition I had, I nailed it. I worked it. I nailed it. I put it out there, let it go, work it, nail it. And like, that's how I booked literally like my first one line in a show, like, <laughs> I had one line. That's it. And like, I love that. I literally went from that to like being a recurring on a Netflix show that's international. Like, wow. Wow. It can happen. You just and have to the, like, yeah. I was just going to ask like, what kind of jobs did you have throughout? But, but you getting fired from waitressing or, or that, that hosting job, like at your restaurant, that negative was that door closing on purpose for you on to purpose. fully Go oh, and I was crying. I did acting. not like that I was letting them down and I was getting fired. I was like, this isn't happening. But it, it was definitely like, I, I was freaking out too. Like, I don't have a job now. Like, what do I do? But I was just, I was taking out too much time to go to auditions. Mm -hmm. My priorities were somewhere else. So I just had to go with it. And I knew I had to make that choice. Like, 
okay, maybe this is like you said, it's like a hidden thing. Like I just have to listen to it. And like, mm. I know that what I really, really, really want to do is act. So like, why am I being distracted by all of these other things that I don't care about? Mm. So let's try and focus on this. Even like if it was just a month of like full on, I'm just focusing my energy on the one thing that I want. It's incredible what we can do when we really focus on what we want. Like a hundred percent. And our, our energy is fire yeah. under our butt, like just goes for it day yeah. night and we don't want to stop and we can't yeah. stop and when you oh, find that passion I, yeah. nothing's gonna stop you like you're on nothing. that path 100 percent. you're putting all of your your heart and soul and thoughts and everything towards that yeah. that's oh my gosh oh yeah. my gosh i love your story it's unbelievable <laughs> like you're really just you've come from so much and this is just you deserve every single a praise that you're getting right now. Like you really, really, really deserve it. People don't even know the behind the scenes, like your backstory. And now doing these lives, they do like, it's so, yeah, it's so I'm important. really like, trying to share more mm -hmm. of my journey and share yeah. more candidly of like what it takes to be here because it didn't just happen and it wasn't luck. Like mm. I worked my butt off to get wow. here and I believed in myself so hard. I bet on myself every single day mm. um, because I want it. I just want it. So like, for me, that's, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Wow. I, I'm honored to like, <laughs> like hear your story and I'm so happy that you're sharing. So honestly, like online, offline, like it's like you're on, you're such a huge inspiration to, to every single person, really. Um, I want that. Yeah. <laughs> like I want to inspire everybody to go and like chase their dreams and know that, you know, that they are enough and that they can do it. And Everybody who wow. tells them no is because they're probably scared that you will and they won't. Or, you know, there's mm. people are going through their own journeys. Let them. But don't listen to, like, what everybody tells you. Like, they can't possibly know who you are and what you feel and mm. what you want. So just um, just have chats with yourself. What do you really want? And the answers will come. I love and that. then follow it. Go yeah. <laughs> you are a true, like, success story in the best way. Like really, really, I'm, I'm so, I'm so impressed with you, your, your thought process and, and everything that like you do, everything you're about, like, it's so, it's so refreshing. Like even, <laughs> even just like, yeah, just, just hearing like you moved with it, like not knowing the language, like all these things. It's just like, wow, 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 wow. Like, <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Seriously, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, there's actually a bunch of questions coming in, and a lot of the questions are, is there going to be a season two for Ginny and Georgia? Y'all, I have told you this in every single conversation we have. When I know, you will know. We're not keeping ah! anything secret. We have not heard. Tell Netflix that you want it at them. Keep watching <gasps> the show. Keep sharing the show. Um fingers crossed I have everything crossed inside of me that this show definitely deserves a season two three four five six I want to see everybody like grow up and have kids like that's how much I want to see all the oh, stories evolve that but one now, right now we're like we don't know. on the edge of our seat of a season two we're like oh, can I binge watch now the second one like I know yeah we don't know yet and and when we do I promise you like all of the socials is going to be exploding again because I'm sure everybody will be glad to hear it um I I think they deserve at least another season. And, and after being number one on all these charts, I'm sorry, Netflix, I'm looking straight at you. If you're ah! here, renew us. Everyone okay. tag at Netflix. <laughs> Please and thank you. <laughs> season two. Oh my gosh. Um, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to be on this live, share your, your story and your words and your heart and your soul. Like you are such an inspiration and keep doing you we all need we all need your energy your story your passion it is so it it, it bleeds through every single every single person's lives life lives that <laughs> you touch you're about to touch everybody that keeps following you and all these things like the platform that you have you are using it to your fullest advantage and just sharing exactly who you are and we all need you in all of our lives. <laughs> I, I so, need y'all too. <laughs> I'm so blessed to know you. Like you're just, you're just an oh, angel. You're so Thank sweet. you. <laughs> Thank you, Marnie. Thank you. Thank I you appreciate it. So uh, much. I, I'm so my proud of you. My chicks hurt from smiling. <laughs> this is like, 
literally like let's just do this for a second mm. <laughs> it hurts it hurts Ooh, just a little face uh, massage right all good i i really love these lives because it gives me an opportunity to actually be me um mm. i don't think it's enough with like posting a picture and posting my work and things like mm. that like those are the highlights i get to be on live and talk about the other real stuff and like the realness of just being alive and going through the motions of life and following your dreams and at the same time like you know the the winnings and the sh failings of it and like i read a question someone said on here and that'll be the last thing i say but um how do you deal with the fear of failing mm. embrace it i think failing the word itself like yeah we need a better word listen yeah yeah um I opportunity this and like it is an opportunity to keep growing and keep learning. A mistake is a gift because it mm. means that you can learn to do something better. Failing isn't that you are a bad person. Don't reflect it back to you. Failing just means you get to prepare again and try again. Um, you know, like it's why, why people play video games. When it says game over, you can literally restart and do it again until you do beat the game. Like life mm. is like that. Like f don't see failing as like the end of something and then you're like just, that's it. Like, keep trying. There's There should be, like, so much joy in wanting to try something again and being better every time you come back to it. Mm. I never want to – I want to keep failing. If that's what you want me to say, like, I want to keep being challenged. If I was a natural at everything I encountered, I would never grow because there would be no resistance. You only grow from being uncomfortable and from being – and, you know, like your comfort zone is over here. This is where the growth happens. Like hey. that's so cliche, but it's so true. <laughs> Embrace the fear because it means that you are finding resistance and your mind like change is scary, but it's so, sorry, I'm getting so emotional. Like it's so worth it. Embrace the failing. Like it's a beautiful thing. So I love that you said yeah. there should be a different word for it because fail should be. is such a negative word. You fail. It's like, no, but I can literally try again. Like, that is the beauty of life. We are able to restart and start over. Like, nothing is permanent. Only death. Like, mm -hmm. once you're done, you're done. But you have your entire life until you breathe your last breath to keep trying and keep failing until you find wins and successes. And even then, like, that's not the end-all be-all. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it's the growth part of it. Like, look how far you've come. Mm -hmm. So embrace it. Just embrace it. Mm -hmm. Just don't don't let it. And every time we fail, thing. it's just learning more about ourselves. One hundred percent. I you know I tried this. 100%. Now I'm you know it hit me. I'm not gonna do that again. Or that door yeah. closed. Okay, great. I know that that wasn't meant for me. Or yeah, there's another opportunity from it. And you kind of okay. I don't. I I choose not to do these things. Or those didn't work for me. Good. That's actually good because you can now focus more and narrow down. And also like making the same mistake more than once doesn't mean that you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. um, that's so human. Like making the same mistakes. It, you just have to make sure that if you are making the same mistake over and over, then it's, you need to change something about how you approach it. It isn't mm -hmm. the thing. It's about how you're approaching it. So hold yourself accountable to trying something different and, and attacking it from a different side. If you're mm -hmm. going to go through it again and the same thing happens over and over and but don't have it be a reflection of like you're a bad person because mm -hmm. it should never be that like you know some things are difficult and difficulty we're going to encounter in our entire life and that's okay yeah i love that cool amazing <laughs> amazing words of wisdom um you're literally a star inside and out and thank you thank you so much for being here today thank you Everyone, thank you so, so much. much for watching oh my gosh Hockey yeah, honestly, you like so much. You have no idea. Everybody watching, please I know, know that I love everybody. Like all of these, I see all of your flags from all over the world and all your comments. I'm like watching as we're talking. So thank you. Um, I will be back on live again. So stay tuned. I love talking to you all and um, have a great day. Save the live so people can obviously uh, check back in. But um, heart. Yeah. So nice <laughs> connecting again with you. You are amazing. Oh, mwah. have mwah. a lovely Thank rest you. of your day. And Thanks. we'll talk soon. Mwah. Ciao. Bye.